So, hey, yeah, folks, welcome back. We really appreciate your patience and your perseverance over learning the AZ-900. And with all your support, we have reached to the day three of our three days boot camp series on AZ-900. So uh, it's all because of your patience. And I hope the sessions are really very interesting and learn, uh, you are learning a lot. And it will really help you out in clearing your AZ-900 exams. So let's continue with the session and let's wrap up with the boot camp today. And I'll urge all of you to please take the sessions and tomorrow or uh, tomorrow, most probably tomorrow, we are going to conduct the quiz on AZ-900 where winners are going to get uh, swags from Microsoft and also Azure passes worth $100. So it's a wonderful opportunity for all of you that you are going to learn and you are getting rewarded as well for learning only. So let's make learning excited. And today we have with us our speaker. So thank you very much, sir, for coming here and taking out your time from your busy schedule. Let's wrap up with the schedule, sir, session. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Um, so let me know if you can see my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome back to the day three of the event. And today we'll wrap up this, uh, three day boot camp, as uh, told by the host. And, uh, so here I am, uh, my name is, uh, uh, Shreyan Fernandez, currently a gold Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, and I've worked in a startup. Uh, I'm interning at KPMG India, and uh, I am a hackathon enthusiast. I've participated in various hackathons um, and bagged a few accolades as well, and I'm MTA certified. Uh, and yeah, I do love writing blogs and uh, spreading the knowledge. So you can follow my blogs on uh, dev.to and uh, I have given the links down there at uh, dev.to uh, slash rayan1999. And I'm a global speaker as well. So I have uh, delivered uh, talks at various conferences like AI student conference, um, cloud summit 2021, so on and so forth. So I have also uh, contributed to Microsoft uh, developer channel as well and the reactor as well. Uh, so you can find my uh, uh, talks, talks there. And uh, my domains of interest lie in artificial intelligence, blockchain, DevOps, web dev, extended reality, uh, that's your AR, MR, and VR, uh, cloud computing, uh, which is what we are doing in this bootcamp and IoT robotics and then the Power Platform. So you can follow me on a LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, if you want to follow my uh, projects that I do, the repositories that I have, you can definitely uh, follow me on uh, or you can find them on uh, github.com slash shreyan1999. So without further delay, let's uh, begin with our just a second. Yeah. So without further delay, let us begin with today's uh, topic. So uh, all this while we have covered uh, things around uh, uh, Microsoft Azure. So we started from the very basics. That is what is cloud? What is cloud computing? And uh, then we saw what is Azure? How did Azure evolve uh, to the date it is today? And uh, uh, then we also had a couple of introduction to this, all those services. And yesterday we spoke about a uh, couple of technologies and stuff, you know, some revolving tech like IoT, DevOps, um, a lot more AI and stuff like that. So we had a gist of everything and how is Azure helping us to do that? And we spoke a little bit about the, uh, what do you call the security and stuff like that, right? So because you have to be really aware of what, uh, who's handling your data, right? It's not just something, you know, you give and then you can just rest easily. So that's also something we spoke about yesterday. And uh, after that, we went ahead and we saw that, you know, how do you maintain things? Because maintenance is also a very crucial role when it comes to your um, mm, development and stuff right so we spoke about all those things yesterday so let's see what is in store today so today's agenda will be seeing what are azure identity services right and uh, after that let's see when to set up the cloud governance and then we'll see why our compliance privacy on azure so special and why has what has microsoft considered in in this uh pace right and uh where to plan and manage your costs, right? Because every, as I said, it's a pay as you go model and you incur cost at literally every step you take. So how do we come across and uh, kind of, you know, uh, manage this cost? How do we calculate the cost? How do we know, you know, how do we get the estimate and stuff? Let's see all, all that as well. And finally, let's see how to choose the right services and what, what are the SLAs in that. 
right so with that let's begin with today's topic so before going ahead let's let's just discuss about these two terms like you know authentication and authorization okay so usually these are the two terms that we hear uh, very regularly in our everyday life right for authentication and authorization so you know google has its oauth thing and then there are a lot more oauth things going on so what do you mean exactly by this term called authentication right authentication is basically a process of establishing the identity of a person or service that wants to access a resource okay so like let's say um, you are supposed to go inside and you know uh like let's say you have to enter an office okay let's say you are an employee at some organization some xyz organization and you're supposed to enter the office space so you must be authenticated person to enter that space so you will have your id card which will show and then hey see this is this shows that i am particularly an employee of this xyz organization and uh, there is there'll be a person or there'll be a machine that will tell that yes he's the right person and i can let them in so one way this is to avoid all those intruders in uh, uh, to you know enter your space enter the organization space right so what does it involve then right it it's an act of challenging a party for legitimate credentials so basically as i said your id card right that's what it means and provides a basis for creating a security principle for identity and access control so basically uh, it, it establishes whether the user is who they are uh, who they say they are like let's say if i say i'm shreyan so how do you know i'm shreyan right i can i can be like someone else can come in my name and then say hey, hey, i'm shreyan so i have many other ways to prove it right you know my my identity cards that are given by the government and various other institutions right so i can prove them yes see i'm shreyan he is not he is just lying right so that's how that's what authentication talks about so just very carefully keep this term in mind so that is called authentication now let's move on to the next term that is what is authorization okay so basically once you uh, get that user's identity is genuine right so the next part you have is to uh, okay since i'm an employee now let's say i'm the employee of this xyz organization so now what happens once i'm an employee there so i won't be having access to everything i can like you know it's not like my own house where i can go and hey, i can go into the kitchen i can go into the bedroom i can go anywhere no there are a couple of places where entry is restricted in especially the organizations right so this is just a you know i'm just saying how authorization works but this is not what authorization we are talking about we will be talking the authorization on the cloud right so how can we give a specific uh control to a particular employee to access that particular thing something like that you know that is what authorization does here in our case right you in in general i'm just saying you know entries are re restricted so only authorized personnel only can enter there's a board like you know if you go to like let's say mcdonalds uh, to have something and then you see a board right near the kitchen only authorized personnel are uh, allowed inside something like that so authorization is the process of establishing what level of access an authenticated person or service has so keep in mind the firstly in the first phase the person must be authenticated and only then he'll be getting the authorization okay so that's how these two terms are related it specifies what data they are allowed to access and what they can do with it right in in terms of the cloud or the application that we'll be talking about just to summarize that uh, there is a picture here so that's the id card provided by someone called as tailwind traders and that's his authentication like his name is robin uh, danielson and uh, yes he's authenticated now and you can see a green tick right there and uh, once that is done and then you know this particular guy is uh, authorized to access the apps and resources data and the access level so that's how uh, authentication and authorizations are related so now uh, you might have heard this term called uh, active directory azure active directory right it's a very common term that is used and any services that we use has this term uh, you know give the access using the aad and stuff like that and this specially works in organizational level if you if you think you know at a students level if you are just saying you know and then might not be that significant but this it becomes very very much significant when it goes to an uh, author uh, organizations level right so what is uh, aad then right what is azure active directory it's uh, it's abbreviated as aad right so that provides identity services that enable the users to sign in and access both your uh, cloud applications and uh, cloud applications that you develop so i'll just show you how that looks like in the portal in a while 
Okay, so when you secure your identities on premises with the Active Directory, uh, even the Microsoft does, uh, you know, doesn't monitor your sign in, right? When you connect your Active Directory with Azure AD, Microsoft can help protecting your data. Like, let's say if there is any uh, threat you see, like we, we spoke about the threats yesterday in the previous session, we spoke about the threats. Now I told you, we'll, we'll see how to control the threats, right? So this is how, this is one of the way in which, you know, you can do that. Okay, so you have Azure Active Directory. You can authenticate the people who want, you know, to access that thing. And this is a matter of fact, you know, the Active Directory is not something very new. It was something that Microsoft introduced in uh, Windows 2000, okay, back then to give uh, the main motive behind this was to give the organizations, uh, uh, what do you say, the ability to manage multiple on-premises infrastructure that uh, they already had or the components that they had and uh, the systems like basically there were a lot of systems as well by using a single identity okay like this was something that came up before in the windows machines but then as days uh, developed and the clouds developed right microsoft uh, thought why not give it into the cloud so that's where the birth of azure active directory came so that's how it came into existence now for example uh, i've stated there right so azure active directory can detect sign in attempts from unexpected locations now uh, if you have used any sign-ins from, you know, for Gmail and stuff. So there is this thing. So it, it traces your IP addresses, right? Where have you logged in from or how, what is that activity? And then it, it lets you know that, you know, there has been an attempt to sign into your particular Gmail and stuff like that. So that's how things work. And uh, uh, this is what we know from the front end. But what goes in the back end is something you can see here, right? Using the Azure Active Directory. You can do all those things. You can play around with that. Of course, on Google, but I'm seeing, you know, you can do that same thing with Azure. So for on-premises environments, Active Directory running on your Windows particular server, as I told you that there was this already introduced on Windows machines long back in Windows 2000. So that provides an identity and access management service that's managed by your own organization. Now you can connect this to your Azure Active Directory as well. Okay. So it is, again, Microsoft's cloud-based identity and access management service. So with this, you can control the identity accounts, but Microsoft ensures that this service is available globally. So with that, I'll just show you how that looks like. Um, Azure Active, yeah, see. So this is that logo. This is a tiny logo. Whenever you see this logo, just you know, keep in mind that this is something pointing towards your Azure Active Directory. So this is uh, the one that I'm a part of, like I'm um, I'm part of, you know, student ambassadors organization. So we have a particular thing here and then you can see all those controls that I can give, you know, like monitoring and uh, what are the management that I can do? What are the users we have and a lot more things like that. So I cannot show much in detail because it's a private uh, confidential data. So I cannot show much in depth, but that's how your Azure Active Directory looks like. Right. So if you can just go to Google, uh, sorry, uh, a portal.azure.com and then just like you know type in azure active directory so you can find it there and i would recommend you all to uh, go ahead and try it out on your own today and see how can you play around with this particular azure active directory okay so now with that now the next question is why is who will use it right so who can use this azure active directory what do i use because yesterday when i told you about uh, other things, the various other uh, resources that are available. So I spoke about, you know, you can provision this, you can do that, you can do this. Now the question you might have is what, okay, fine. I understand Shreyan what you're saying, you know, you're telling me that, yeah, this is needed, that is needed, yeah, security wise. I totally understood that, but who will use this, right? So yes, so here is your answer for that. So firstly, IT administrators can use it and then app developers can use it, then your users can use it and also online service subscribers, right? M365, Microsoft Office 365, Azure, Dynamics, CRM, online subscribers, you know, all those can. And uh, now you might ask, how can users use it, right? Users can manage their identities using this service, right? So, and then now a question, hey, I'm very much uh, uh, eager to know how, how are app developers using this thing, right? So developers can use Azure AD to provide, uh, you know, like the standards based approach for adding functionality to your applications. Like, you know, you build and you can add some new functionality, security features, SSO, and a lot more things, right? So you can do that using 
Azure Active Directory again. And then, of course, the IT admins can definitely use this because that is, you know, I, I feel, I personally feel IT admins use this very much uh, often than uh, any other uh, roles. But, of course, you can use it here as well. Then there is another word that, you know, something we call it as the tenant. Okay, so it's basically a representation of a particular organization. So it basically is separated from other tenants and it has its own identity. For example, to show this to you, uh, I am a part of three tenants. Like I'm a part of student ambassadors, right? That is my main tenant. But apart from that, I have taken part in a couple of projects. Like let's say uh, a learn module or let's say I, I was doing something else. So, you know, we were divided into tenants. So that particular teams was supposed to be switched. But of course, the you... Email ID remained the same, but of course the okay. This is asking me for a password, so let me just enter that. So it it was asking, uh, you know, you have the same email ID, but under the same email ID. So if I just show you, uh, using the paint, okay. This let's say this is my main email ID, right? This is that main email ID provided to me by uh, Microsoft, or you know, I have opened one. So what I can do. Uh, now, uh, one is your main organization, right? Whatever organization you're a part of. In my case, I am a part of student ambassador. So this is my main organization and that's what my AD also shows. Apart from this, I can also be a part of other things. Like, you know, people can add me to a different organization, but we don't call it as organization. Instead, we call it as a tenant. Okay. So this is how things work. And uh, I was a part of two tenants under this SA organization itself. So that is that. I was trying to show you, but it is asking me to log in and do a lot of other things. So let it be um, because we are running short of time, right? So, but I, I hope you got the point, like, you know, this is how your uh, tenants work. Okay. So after that, now what services does your Azure Active Directory provide? I told you, you can do SSO, you can add that to your application, right? Lot more things I told you. So how can you do that? So what are the services that it provides? So firstly, authentication. I think by now, everyone must be aware of what authentication is. That's why that was the reason why I spoke about authentication in a separate slide, authentication and authorization both. So I guess by now we are very much uh, uh, familiar with that term, right? So and then there is something called as SSO, right? So SSO is basically a single sign on. So it enables you to remember only one username and a password. Okay to access multiple applications. Like I can use the same, um, what do you say, uh, password for my ID password for Outlook. I can use the same ID password for Teams. I can use the same one for uh, any any Microsoft service, for example, right? So I can use the same ID password. So that's, that's a basic example, classic example for this. And then there is application management where you can uh, manage all your application, like, you know, SaaS apps, SAS, sorry, I call it as SaaS. So all those things can be managed with that. And then there is device management as well in this. So, you know, you can, for your, for your PC, for example, for Windows, you have that thing, right? So you can do such device management as well using uh, this particular uh, service. Now, I told you that uh, you your PC has a different thing and, uh, you know, you, you can connect it to that. So how do you connect? So one might ask me, hey, Shane, you told me, right, so now I'm interested in your AAD service. So how do I connect? So the answer is very simple. There is something called as Azure AD Connect. So with that, you can connect your um, uh, machine to your Azure Active Directory, on-premises environment to an Azure Active Directory environment. With that, uh, the Azure Active Directory is done. So now let's move on to the next topic. That is, what is multi-factor authentication? Okay, so multi-factor authentication, it's a process where users prompted during the sign, uh, prompted during the sign-in process for an additional form of uh, identification. So let's say it can be anything, as we can see, we can broadly divide, divide it into three categories. Uh, one, something the user knows, it can be his password or something, right? So that is something the user already knows. And uh, then what something that the user has. Now you might question, hey, Shren, what can the user have? right it can be a biometrics it can be your a single otp one time password that comes up especially when you do your credit card transactions right credit card debit card transactions so any financial transactions in that case you get something called as otp only once you enter that otp you get to go ahead from there if that fails then your whole transaction is fixed. so something something like that also can be asked here so that that comes under that's the second category under multi-factor authentication 
and uh, the next part uh, is something you know oh sorry uh, in in the user has thing it it can only be the otp something the user is right so it can be his fingerprint scan you know sorry facial scanning it can be his fingerprint or what you call it as biometrics so that can be as a part of your authentication as well because if you see like you know some offices have it they have a biometric scan especially the government offices around usually have this biometric sort of punch in the moment you enter the office which then records your time apparently once you punch once you're done with your office you can put it and then you exit the gate something like that um and i don't know how many of you are familiar with this bangalore metro has this thing so something that the user has you know and the classic example so you get these tokens when you when you once you go and purchase a ticket you get these tokens so you have to scan that over a machine and that opens that you know yes this this user is now allowed to enter this premises and it will also have till what uh, let's say i have taken the ticket from a to b so if i go till c then definitely i have to pay my extra charges as well this is this is actually implemented in most of the cases so that is something you know like uh, an authentication right so with that now uh, we move to the next thing that is your conditional access what is conditional access now so i know today there are a lot of terms because uh, this is something more of a theoretical thing that we are discussing today apart uh, like what we did yesterday was something different what what we are doing today is something different so conditional access is basically a tool that your aad uses to allow okay or even to deny access to resources based on your identity signals now you'll ask me what are these signals right so these signals include who the user is who where the user is and what the device user is requesting access from so <coughs> again sorry <coughs> so again the best example for this is your google sign in right it also tracks your ip address with which it says hey were, were you the same person who accessed from this ip and are you the same person who accessed from this ip so it also tells you the place so if i am in like let's say somewhere in madhya pradesh and then i move to bangalore then once i log in it last key are you the same guy who has traveled from there to there yeah and that is what your conditional access is so conditional access help it administrators again in which ways so it empowers users to be productive wherever and whenever and then the, to protect the organization's assets because as i told you all this comes under the security right so that's how it is working so now again you will ask me is this conditional access available on azure yes it is there so you will have to go with the azure uh, active directory premium p1 or p2 license to get that with that now let's move on to the next topic uh, that is what is role based access control so in or, or else you can even call this as you know rbas that's that's the abbreviation of the same so rbas is nothing but your role based access control i think this term this term what do you call you know like a role based access control i think i think it's pretty self explanatory here right you actually know what is what how things are going on and all so basically when you assign something this all comes under you know a broad spectrum called as the governance right now once you have things you'll have to manage things as well as i said you not just the app side but also there's a management side to it so let's see how things go under this governance uh, rule or you know how things work so role based access control let's say there are three people now this let's say i'm giving three roles owner reader contributor so although these words are very self explanatory so let me just explain that to you so when you assign the owner like you know this owner role to a particular user at the management scope so basically what do you mean owner has basically the every right right so that user can manage everything in all subscriptions within that particular management group uh, if you if you want to recall what is this management group uh, i think we had discussed this on day one so you know we had discussed about management groups and then that chart was shown i think all of you must be remembering that so that's that's the management group that i'm referring to and when you assign the reader role to a group at the subscription scope right where if i'm giving him the reader role now uh the members of that group can only view every resource group but uh, within that particular subscription okay when i give the contributor role okay this is the other role to an application at the resource group scope right which scope we are referring to this is very very important at the resource group scope the application can manage resources of all types within that only resource group not apart from that okay so that is the thing now i have given out a cha chart here which says a uh, scope versus the role so management group uh, subscription 
resource group and resource comes under your scope and the roles have reader uh, resource specific custom contributor and owner and then automa at automated processes have basically everything so but still this is the chart that links uh, your um, role based things right so yeah this is a place where you can assign your role you know this is the access control panel where you can assign your a role now let's say uh, you gave the role now there is a problem and you know there is something you know uh, there is a chance where people can kind of you know accidentally uh, delete some resources so how do you avoid that how do you keep a track of that so i'll just show that to you in the portal here itself so, so once you come here under your uh, okay this is this, this these are the metrics we had created this yesterday so under this hub settings you can see something called as this lock right so you can add a new lock so lock name is required which type is it for a read only lock is it for a delete so this is basically how you lock a resource so that it won't get deleted you know accidentally as well because there is a chance when you are running an organization uh, you can uh, do you know there is a lot more mis mis happenings that can happen so to avoid that there is another feature here that is to add the locks okay so as i as i just showed you in this particular thing so you can give two types of locks one is delete okay one is uh, the read only so delete is basically uh, not deleting you cannot delete that thing okay so you need authorization again to do that all things so that is that about the locks okay so with that i think mm, yeah so i think uh, all of you are pretty uh, clear till here right so we can i i know it's being a lot of theory today so but please bear with me right so now let's see how to organize your organization like you know azure resources whatever you have created with a tag okay these are called the tags so as you can see i've given the name and in between this is a table that shows uh, you know all those things like what are the tags that are there so as they're applied to a virtual machine so this is all for a particular resource if you can see i'm just talking about the virtual machine here and nothing else right so there is an impact tag high impact test and then there is something else owner cost cutting so this is this is something you know you give tags to everything this is something for the um, high you know, what is the impact that is there or what is the environment that is there is a test environment is it a, a dev environment or is it a production environment or who's the owner the internal cost center node so everything is taken care of and you can assign tags as well so now after that we will have um yeah so these are something some other things that are also there in the uh, governance sector as i said you governance is also a huge part when it comes to um all these things you know you have to manage this all thing so azure has some extra things here so let us discuss about them i am not sure if i can show this uh exactly how things work here but let me just see okay so firstly we'll see something about the trust center what what do you mean by the trust center here okay so but before going ahead uh, if you can give me a heads up that if you are all clear with this so i can you know go ahead from here so i'll just give a two minute thing so if you guys want to text something so you can let me know if i'm going too fast okay if there is uh, nothing then let's go ahead okay i'll just go ahead because we're running short of time as well so let's say what is the trust center so if you go to this particular place so let me just show you uh microsoft trust center right so cloud integrity at its finest right it's to india english Hmm. so this is the trust center of course this is an old picture that i'm showing you right this is sorry this is an old picture that i'm showing you so if this basically showcases all your microsoft principles for maintaining your data integrity in the cloud and how microsoft implements uh, all those you know security privacy compliance and uh, your transparency in all not just azure but everywhere okay but all its products 
cloud products and also the services for uh, services can be anything right so all those things how can we do so if you can see here if we can't protect people then we don't deserve this trust like you know this is a uh, thing that they had you know it was said by brad smith the president and the chief legal officer so the trust center basically uh, provides an in-depth information about the security privacy compliance uh, offerings and policies uh, features and uh, practices across the microsoft cloud products okay so additional resources to each topics are also given out here okay so what are the commitments that they have you know your con you control your data so as i told you that is the first thing we are transparent about where data is located and how is it used we secure the data at rest and in transit so basically they have uh, when you are logging it as well as when it is with them that's what they mean and then they defend your data from all the cyber attacks right so that is how it works and so compliance offerings law enforcement and data requests us national security orders report international export controls as well so you can go ahead and let's, let's say if you want to learn more about how compliance offerings are given out so you can just click on that and then you know you'll see everything here right so it is iso 27 double zero one certified as well that's a standard certification even that is uh it's called information security um i s m s page so management standards page it's a typical uh, of the type of uh compliance information that the microsoft provides you okay there are a lot more but this is one that i named so you can find all these details in this page okay so if you want to learn more about how how is your data compliance working and stuff like that you can definitely refer this page then after that there is something called as your azure government okay so now you'll ask me like hey how is it different from the government that we have no this is a separate instance of microsoft azure service okay so it basically addresses the security and compliance needs of us federal agencies okay state and the local government because uh us is because you know this is actually settled there so azure government offers physical isolation from your uh, non-us government deployments and you know it provides a screened us uh provides screened us personnel as well so azure government services handle data that is subjected to a certain government uh, regulations and requirements okay so as you can see here it is already shown there so federal risk authorization and uh, then there is something called as nist national institute of standards and technology and international traffic in arms regulation itar okay and then there is dod that is defense of uh, department of defense and then criminal justice uh, information service so all these things i know these are kind of very hard to digest at this point of time but uh, for the exam point of view it is very necessary to understand all these things so now let's talk about something that even i recently came across something called as azure china 21 vianet okay so what is this you you must be very intrigued when you see the term china right so what is this so basically it's a separated instance okay of your cloud services located in china okay so azure 21 uh china v uh 21 vianet uh, is an independently operated and transacted by there is a company it's called shanghai blue cloud technology corporation limited okay so it is a wholly owned uh, subsidiary of beijing 21 vianet broadband data center so they actually manage all this ias and the pas platforms so that is a uh, screenshot what you can see and there are a couple of azure products that are available in china and uh, uh office 365 power bi technologies and a lot more other things are also there but there are some restrictions on that as well so with that we are done with the security and compliance part so after this we have finally reached the last phase okay of this boot camp where we discuss about the pricing because now you know whatever i spoke so far okay you you must have understood a lot of the parts but still you know the final final thing comes about the costing you know uh how how can you you know finally convince me when it comes to cost so, yeah shen i i heard all your things now i'm pretty much convinced but finally there is this one point where you can convince me on costing 
how transparent are things when it comes to costing okay so firstly yes there are a couple of calculators around this so firstly we call, we'll discuss about something called as the tco so total cost of ownership calculator how it works okay there is a pipeline that i've shown you on the top so firstly you define your workloads okay then you adjust your assumptions because you are not sure right when you are deploying something you are not sure what is the resource that you need right you don't know those things so how do we do that you adjust some assumptions and then you view your report at there so let me just show this to you practically um i'll just close this this is your tco okay that is total cost of ownership uh, calculator so this is again as i told you it helps you estimate the cost savings of your operating of operating your particular solution on azure over time instead of uh, in your on premises data center so basically how how does it work on azure and you can add your workload here right see and uh, what are the workloads you need networking how many gb of net what are the thing you know enter the amount of things and then you can go to the next one and then so on and so forth. What does the GPU need? Okay, do you need K80 or do you need M60? Windows Server is needed. Uh, procs. What is uh, how many servers do you need? And uh, do you want to operate and you know operating system license? If you are not sure what is that, hover over this and you know it will show you what is that. And then physical servers or do you want the virtual machines, right? Which operating system do you need? Windows or Linux? Again, web app or what? What is the thing? You know, define your workloads very precisely here. Right, and if you're not satisfied with one, if you need multiple databases, then this clone here, and then you can say this is a database I need. You can name this like something like this, you know, something in this sort. You can do all these things. So this is how you calculate your a uh, workload, and then finally, once you're done with this, then you can adjust your assumptions as I told you, like electricity price kilowatt per hour, hourly pay rate for IT administration, so on and so forth. Finally, you'll get a pie chart of everything. You know, what is your uh, report that finally is being generated? right so if you want to catch uh you know if you want to know more about this then i'll give you a link at the end where you can try it out on your own right you can sit and try it out you can work around you can see what are the variable resources that you can give now initially on the day one when we discussed uh, i told you about see this is how azure subscriptions work this is how it works this is how you do but there might be a question hey shen now i'm really interested to get into your subscriptions part but let me know how do i get a subscription in the first place i, I think one thing i told you was you can get it here for using a student account next thing there is something called as free trial 30 days free trial is something that you get okay so you can do with using that as well the next part let's say free trial is over but still you want to do that so how will you get how, how will you do that Right, that is where uh, there are also a couple of free services as well. So free trial doesn't mean you know uh, you can try, try out everything, but there are a couple of free services. I guess if I'm not wrong, there are 25 free services. If I'm not wrong, when I I last it was 25, so there might be more. Okay, so uh, you can have that. Uh, you can try try them out. So your Azure services are disabled uh, once your trial ends. Okay, the free trial once it ends, you have to that will be disabled and uh, you have to then upgrade to the paid subscription it's it's more or less like what any provider does you know first they give you a free service and then then you'll have to pay for that so the next thing with that once that is ended but still you want to explore more so there is something called as pay as you go okay so <clears throat> quite self-explanatory again so as you use you have to pay for that okay then there are a couple of member offers as well so if you want to learn more about them i'll give you a couple of links you can go there and study about the member office because it's a lot uh, and lot so now the question is hey how do i purchase this thing firstly through an enterprise agreement you can purchase it then you can do it directly from the web or through a cloud so a solution provider so even uh, and that is also available you can purchase it in these categories so what factors affect your cost now you, you know your resource types are one thing then your usage meters how 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 are you using that thing you know and then your um, how how much like for example if i say about the apis we discuss about functions app right so how many calls is it making so based on that you'll be charged and uh, yeah that was about your uh, costing so now there might the next slide is something about your pricing calculator right uh, i told you one way is that now let's see what does pricing calculator do again we'll just go to the live demo um or we go okay 
so yeah, this is about your pricing calculator so let's say you want to see something example scenarios so this is what you do so let's say add to estimate how much how much is my estimate being yeah so estimate is added and here you go voila so this is showing you all those things so monthly it will cost me this much and uh then for that this for synapse analytics then analysis services uh, storage accounts cosmos db how much does it cost so basically this is how you can uh, kind of uh, see and then you know you can manage accordingly that where do you want to cut cost, do some cost cutting uh, you know it is exceeding your particular uh, costing so how do you kind of then control this costing right so that also can be seen with this. So then you can see, you know, pay as you go. Or do you want to do this year, one year reserve capacity? Do you want to do that? Or whatever uh, you guys want to do, you can carry on with that. So that is how your costing works now. So I guess, you know, you can see a lot more things here. So you can explore more on this. You, uh, I think I'll be sharing this. I'll, I'll share this PPT definitely. You can follow uh, this link and see how things work. So now with that, there is a final topic that I would like to discuss and then we'll wrap up the session. And that is about your service uh, level agreement. So now you might ask me, what are these SLAs? How does that help me? Because I, I mentioned this term SLA initially when I was starting about in the agenda, right? So basically it's a formal agreement that you make um, between a service company, okay? and the customer like let's say i am the customer here so who's my service company that is the microsoft azure here so okay so that is how you know why are sls important i guess it is very self explanatory right it is very much needed to specify what your needs are and what how much you are paying everything like you know it must it's like an agreement now you'll ask me why is an agreement necessary right you must be knowing why are they necessary in in that you know what will the vendor tell you like you know you you know a rented house agreement will have you'll pay this much rent, this is your water bill, this is your electricity bill, this you'll handle the electricity bill, so on and so forth. But what does your cloud thing, you know, uh, show you, right? So uh, it will have, you know, a general terms and, you know, SLA details. Now uh, there will be downtimes, they'll say this might be the downtime and then the service credits and then uh, free services. What if, what if there is an outage, right? How can you request... Uh, service credit from Microsoft, so on and so forth. So you can define your own application SLA and then what are the business impact it has. So so you can, you know, it's a huge thing. So you can definitely explore a little more about this once you understand, you know, once you go through the portal, then there will be a couple of uh, SLAs that are predefined there, right? So that is one thing. So then uh, there is something called as the service life cycle, okay? So service lifecycle basically defines how every Azure service is released for public use, right? So there will be something called as a uh, preview services. I think I can show you one preview service. I'm not sure if it is still in preview, but let me just see. There'll be a small preview thing written on the top. Okay, that's that's how preview services work. So that basically means, you know, it is still under preview and then, you know, it is not yet finalized initially when microsoft came azure came that was the whole azure was itself in preview let me just check if i can find a preview service uh there was one under blockchain that was under preview it's now taken out so basically your preview service will have something like you know small preview written on the top so that that basically means that particular uh thing right that is under uh, preview so now let's say you saw everything and now let's say you have some feedback to give okay you want to give uh, microsoft a feedback hey I'm, i wanted i thought this will be there so that is very simple how do you send your feedback to microsoft and which i urge you know every user to do because uh, of course microsoft can improve on their features once the users give their feedback right so to do that it is very simple you can go here you can just say you know uh, some some random feedback, you know, you can type in here and then Microsoft can email you about your feedback if you want to do that. And once you type in something here, you can just, you know, give a feedback here, right? So that's how you provide your feedback to Microsoft. So I hope, you know, this particular session has also been uh, kind of uh, helpful for you to understand a little more on Microsoft Azure, how things work on Microsoft's end, 
right so now you might ask me uh, okay you you told a lot about azure now i'm kind of confused where to go next from here so that the answer is very simple so you can head on to microsoft azure you can just start experimenting around all these things that i just spoke okay and you can learn all the explore options because microsoft azure itself gives you a couple of things so like let's say you don't know what is azure data box click on learn more okay there's a small learn more option here it will show you what is that and some have something called as ms learn right so it, if you click on that it will redirect you to this thing where you can learn about like let's say azure data lake storage what is that how to how it works how it works there'll be a couple of exercises here you can learn with that right that is one place so again the platform is microsoft learn there will be a learn tv platform a learn tv written there as well where you can find a lot of um video recordings so that is here learn tv right learn live ask, ask the expert hello world so on and so forth like let's see what is here uh there are already these many episodes so you can just uh, see what episode see this is something you know built a bot with qna maker and azure bot service so they have a recording of about nr so within an hour they'll show you practically how to do it as well so if you want you can refer to such things so all these are usually hosted by, with in association with reactor or there's a channel on youtube called microsoft developer so you can follow all those channels where you know microsoft experts come and give out their uh, in experience and then they introduce you to new topics so you can learn a lot from there as well so and you can earn trophies for everything you do right and you can showcase them uh, as well so with that i would like to conclude this session on uh, microsoft azure's bootcamp as well so i hope you had uh, you learned uh, something from this session as much as i did uh, you know teaching you all so i really enjoyed this thanks a lot of course i would like to thank azure developer communities for uh, managing such a wonderful session so over to you thanks a lot so thank you very much sir for coming here and delivering such a knowledgeable session and giving your precious time we have a question from arun that i missed your previous live stream where you were giving azure pass is there any upcoming azure pass giveaway so yes we are having a uh, azure pass giveaway first of all i would like to tell that uh, we are soon going to conduct a quiz on ag900 where the participants are going to get uh, microsoft merchandise swags and about the quiz you all will be notified through the mails you all will be receiving the mails and 20 will be getting microsoft azure swags and also we will be give away 50 azure passes both 100 dollar each so you guys can let me give you the discord link give me a second yeah so you all can see the discord link it's uh, floating on the bottom of your screen so you all can just click and join our discord server where you can get to know about other upcoming boot camps and all that stuff and you will also be able to you can also join us at our linkedin we are continuously posting about each and everything there and we are soon going to conduct the quizzes as well as give away the azure passes and all the things so nothing to worry about just join the discord we'll post the things and updates about quiz what are the giveaways what are the things we are going to plan so if there are no doubts we are good to wrap up with the session are there any doubts from your side guys i think there are no doubts so let's wrap up with the session no issues thank you shreyan sir for coming here and uh, taking time out of your busy schedule and delivering such a knowledgeable session and thank you everyone for being such a lovely audience see you all in the next boot camp till then good night stay safe bye bye